Hey folks, JSAT here. Welcome to Today I Learn on Action Inputs. So that means we're going to look at how every action works in the game, the timings for inputting actions, input queuing, optimizing your inputs, how special techniques like QQ Cancel actually work, and um, the, the optimal input patterns on a per-weapon basis and how you can do the research yourself. A special thanks to a number of people, Sir Adale and Raindish, for helping make available uh, Fat Shark's underlying dev tools, which some of them are happen to be in the release version, obviously Fat Shark for the awesome game, and for the making the tools in the first place. What is the tool? Uh, link to the mod in the description, but the one we're going to use today is this one. <laughs> You can get it through one of two mods. Again, check the links. Once you have it on, F3, gameplay, weapon debug to turn on F3 to get out of that menu. Okay? And I'll explain what it does momentarily. The other mod we are using, and we're not using for all of its features. We'll come back and use its other features later. But we are going to use Rain Dish's weapon debug, where he used the in-game sweep commands in an interesting way that, I'll, again, I will show you next week. But we're going to be using it right now it's just as a quick way to turn up and turn down the, the time, right? So slow-mo and fast-forward. Okay? Okay. So, okay, there's an anatomy of, anatomy of attack. We're done. Nah, just easy. Okay. First, when I say input, I mean clicking a button. I mean clicking a button. When I say input queuing, queuing is like the British way of saying getting in a line, right? So what do you do with you click a button and it doesn't do something right away, but the game doesn't forget that you did it. It remembers, and then when that window of availability comes up to actually input that action, to actually do that action you wanted it to, comes up, it does it. So let's go over a simple attack and then how to input Q more attacks and why that means you can attack so smoothly if you just smack, 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 click, 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 click. Okay? So I'm going to break it down real slow. So if you think about this, in, in anytime you go to swing a weapon, like a melee weapon, the first thing you're going to do is a four swing where you pull the weapon back, right? Just like with a baseball bat or a golf club or something. You pull it back to get your weight behind it. Then there's that action window where you really have that action part of your swing. And there's the post swing, the kind of the recovery. Okay? In other games, don't worry about these these lines real quick. And the other games, sometimes they choose to make it so you can never cancel an input or an attack during an animation. You can't cancel it at all. It does the force swing, the damage window, and the post swing, and there's nothing you can do about it. Other games, like Dota, allow you to s cancel an animation before the action sweep, during the action sweep, no, the action sweep is instant, but during the, or the post sweep, right? So what that means in other games, like Dota, for example, is you want to issue another command the second the action part of the, um, uh, the attack is done. So the force swing comes, here's the sweep, as soon as the sweep's over, issue another command, right? Vermintide is not such a simple game. Light weapons have those nice features that you have in Dota, where you can input another action so that it starts another action the second the action portion, the action sweep portion of the current action is over. Okay? A lot of slower weapons and certain attacks, it's, it's eccentric because every weapon is designed to feel good rather than be easily explained. There's a significant gap after the action sweep before you can do another action. Let's start by looking at a light and nimble weapon, the sword dagger. Uh, it'd be comparable, for example, to rapier. So if I go ahead and slow this way the heck down to 1%, and I left click. Okay, what's happening? I want you to focus in, and I think I can click like this. How do I click? Where's my mouse? I need here. Okay, focus in on this line right here. This line is how far we are in the action. You see it sweeps forward as the animation progresses, okay? I think if I hold middle mouse, I can do just this. Yes. So it's going to sweep forward in time. So far, we're 0.04 seconds in. Oop, I accidentally canceled the action. Stand by. Apologies. Let's let this action finish. Let's go do that again. Apologies. So we're just 0.00 seconds into the action. Here's the timelines right here, right? Zero point, what is this? One eight seconds into the animation, we're gonna get to this red portion. That's the action sweep, the sweep part, the thing that's actually doing the thing you want. So all this time is the four swing. Here's the action swing. 
here's the post swing. And way over here at two seconds is where the animation will default end and go back to just sitting here like I am right now. Okay? Fine. See all these windows right here? These are the windows for another action to take place. Okay? Action one on a mouse and keyboard, that's your left click. Action, uh, that's what's traditionally your left click. So action one, for example, is going to correspond to a light attack. Okay? Action two hold means holding right click. And what is that going to correspond to? Blocking. Okay? Action wield, a wield action is any type of swap to something else. It's your quick switch, it's swap to melee, it's swap to grenade, whatever have you. So what are we seeing? We're actually seeing that you can literally block cancel this attack at any time. You can hit block and interrupt the attack during the four swing, the action sweep, or the post swing at any moment. Okay? So that's sweet. You start a light attack and you're like, oh shoot, this was a bad idea, I'm about to get smacked, you can block. Not every weapon has this feature. It's one of the nice features of Sword Dagger that makes it feel so safe and good to use. Another thing you can see in Action 1 is you can start Action 1. Let's turn up the, uh, the attack speed slightly. You can start Action 1, a second attack, before the first attack is actually already finished. Or you can actually send a swap item before the attack is actually finished. This is yet another reason that Sword Dagger feels so good, because you can chain your actions so fluidly and completely cancel the post swing. So I'm going to go ahead and send another light attack by left clicking. It's going to right now, right now, start my next attack. Here's attack two. I'm in four swing of attack two. Here it is. You see time is moving forward, forward, forward. Again, I could block cancel at any time. That's what this is telling me. Okay, we're still in the four swing, we're in the four swing, we're in the four swing. Here we go. Hey look, I can actually quick switch, do a swap action before the animation has even come, before the sweep. I can actually cancel this with a swap, okay? I could actually quick switch right now if I wanted to for some reason. I've done damage, I'm doing damage, I'm sweeping for damage, looking for any enemies to hit. And now I can send another light attack and it'll start right now with almost no downtime. Cool. Let's turn up the move speed a little bit. Excuse me. Time a little bit. Okay. Here's the actual attack. And here's the light four. Okay. Let's look at light four. Light four is considerably worse. This is also true on dual swords and dual daggers. There is... It goes attack, 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 attack. Half of beat off of doing nothing. And then attack again. That's what it'll sound like to you if you just click, 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 click as fast as you can. The attacks are not evenly spaced. It's one, two, three, four, half beat. One, two, three, four, half, one, two, three, four. That's what it sounds like, right? So where is that half beat coming from? Okay, so here's the four swing of light four. Here's the damage window of light four. Here is a whole bunch of time after light four, during which you are doing absolutely nothing but waiting to start light one. Okay? I'm going to let that play out for you to show you what I mean. Nothing, 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 nothing. Initiate light one. Okay. So let's go ahead and wait for a second to get everything back to normal. So, what can we do with that information? There is a whole big gap of time during light four. Let's uh, get back to light four. One, two, three four. Okay. There is a whole big gap of time right here. In fact, it is about, I don't even know, 0 0.2 seconds to about 0 0.45 seconds. So 0.25 seconds, a quarter of a second, even on a fast weapon like Sword Dagger, where you are literally doing nothing. Okay. Is there anything else we could be doing with that time? Yes, there is. We could send a wield action, which is any kind of swap, or we could send a block action. That means we have a potential for a block cancel optimization or a QQ cancel block optimization or a Q cancel optimization. What the heck am I talking about? I will link Panda's old video where he just does a no kidding, here's what those things mean. But essentially what a block cancel is, is during this window of time where you're doing nothing and waiting for your next attack, you're allowed to block, okay? So if I send block, 
instead of doing nothing, during this window of time, I'll actually be blocking. Okay? And it goes from 0.23 seconds to 0.47 seconds or so. So about 0.25 second gap. So if I send a block, I am stuck in block for 0.2 seconds, and then I'm allowed to send action one again. So I actually save 0.07 seconds, and during my 1, 2, 3, 4 block, 1, 2, 3, 4, not only is it faster, right, I get more attacks per unit time, I'm actually sitting in block for 0.2 seconds of it, which of course is better than just sitting there doing nothing, right? So here it is, I'll let time progress, I will send another light click, and boom, there I am, back in light 1. Let's get back to light 4. I will show you a QQ cancel. Okay, right now, do you see how before this action sweep is even over, I'm allowed to send a wield action? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit quick switch. I'll let time progress. I have queued up a quick switch. Here's time. I have got my range weapon out. I will now switch to melee again, and now I will lie attack. So, I just saved over a quarter second over a quarter second by quick switching, switching again, and initiating another light attack. That is a QQ cancel. So my guess is there are very few people who have noticed, but there is a pretty huge block cancel or QQ cancel optimization available for sword dagger, dual swords, and dual daggers for the light chain. Okay? Okay. I could show you the same thing for C2. So moving on. What are the things I want you to take away from this? You know what? No, let's just keep doing examples. Instead, what I want to show you is input queuing. Input queuing. So they solved a pretty cool problem. They solved a pretty cool problem to make left click more interesting with these weapons. So instead of left click always just doing the same attack, left click and hold does something different than left click for your melee weapon, right? Light attack and charged attack. In order to do that, this is how they did it, okay? Here's left click and hold. I'm left clicking, I'm holding. Do you see action one release? If you left click and hold, or left click and then release rather quickly, right, within a quarter second, you will send a light attack. The second I release this, I'll send a light attack. So the faster you press and release light one, the faster your light attack will start, right? One more time, pressing and releasing light one instantly is superior than pressing holding for one millisecond and releasing because it is 0.01 millisecond less wasted time, technically. Okay, I am holding, I am holding, I am holding. Oh, I'm gonna have to release hold so I can make time go forward. I did not think of that. That is annoying. Stand by, apologies. Okay, let's do this at 10% speed. I'm going to click and hold. Okay, if I release right now, I will. I have queued up a charge attack. I have queued up a charge attack. If I released any time after this window, in this window of time here, it will wait, it'll queue up a charge attack, and as soon as it gets to this point right here, 0 0.5 seconds, it'll send charge attack. There it is. If I click and hold again and release, if I don't hold long enough, instead it sends C2. Let's do it one more time at 25%, maybe 20% timing, okay? I'm gonna click, hold. I can release right now. Click, hold, release right now. One more time. Uh, too fast. This window here, between here and here, is the optimal time to release your hold. There's this big window of time right here where you release it. It will interpret that you're releasing in this period means you wanted to queue a charge attack and then it will actually send the charge attack at the absolute minimum amount of time it takes to send the charge attack, 0 0.5 seconds. If I instead hold on to it even longer, apologies, but it is what it is, we'll just be patient. Oh god, time is so agonizing. Oh god. Still hasn't sent, still hasn't sent until we get to 0 0.7 seconds, the auto chain. 
So is there a period of window between 0.3 seconds and 0.5 seconds at which you release? It'll send the heavy attack at optimal time. There's a time between 0.5 seconds and 0.7 seconds at which you could release it, which is less than a superior. And if you hold it even longer, it'll send automatically. So you can optimize your charge attack inputs by releasing charge attack at the right time. That is why sometimes you release it too early because your brain knows if you release it at just the right time, you get the optimal attack time, right? So you're actually releasing too early and accidentally sending a light attack. Okay, what else do I wanna show you? I want to answer the question. I got the question, why is block canceling so good on X sword? and not nearly so good on charge attack on cog hammer. Well, let's take a look. Here's C1. What do you see? What do you see? You should be able to read this now, right? You should be able to read this now. There is a period of time right here. Here's the force swing. Here's the action window. Now we are in the post swing. The first action you're allowed to do in the post swing is to block. You cannot send a Q cancel until 0 0.59 seconds. You can't send a wield action until another 0 0.14 seconds later. So you can block cancel 0 0.14 seconds faster than you can send a Q cancel. Okay, so I can block right now. Now, here's something you probably never thought of before, and this actually is slightly incorrect. There's a minimum block time of 0 0.2 seconds. 0.2 seconds. So now we have to wait out 0.2 seconds, and after which we can send another charge attack. Okay? And I'll release now outside of the light attack window, but in the optimal charge attack window. And boom, there it is, sending again. Okay. That is one action. It's with no attack speed whatsoever. It takes, here we are at 0.45 seconds. I block. 0.2 seconds later, I send. I, um, I'm out of block time and I can send charge again. So that means from this moment, from the beginning of charge one, I can send in charge one again at 0.65 seconds. Instead, if I wait all the way here to 0.59 seconds, I could send a QQ cancel and send again, saving a grand total of 0 0.06 seconds, which isn't very much, and QQ cancel is much more demanding and less safe, so that's why you block cancel a X sword charge attack, even though technically QQ cancel is slightly better at 0.06 seconds, diminishing with attack speed. Okay? That's why it's pretty darn good to block cancel X sword. Let's look at Cog Hammer. Cog Hammer. Here we go. I want to bring this time down a bunch. Okay, releasing in the optimal window. Here's the optimal window. Okay, take a look. What do you notice? You can actually send a wield action, in other words, quick cancel, right after the damage window for C1. However, you have to wait another 0 0.25 seconds till you can block. So, a lot of people I see are block canceling with C1, but it is actually incorrect. You should be QQ canceling. So let's show what that looks like in slow-mo. I am sending a swap action, sending it again, and starting again. Optimal window. Boom. Understood? You should not, should not be block canceling. You should be QQ canceling. It is a lot better. It's 0 0.25 seconds and the default block timing, which is 0 0.2 seconds, it is 0 0.45 seconds, or almost a half a second superior to Q cancel. It's not a small time saving, it is an enormous time saving. Okay, let's take a quick look at Fireball and Conflag Staff. Fireball Staff. Let's look at our first range weapon. Okay. So, here is just a left click. Notice what's missing? No action window. It's just sends. It's projectile. It's just much more like Dota. Okay. So, basically, the only thing you're really seeing here is the post swing. Let me uh, slow it down. Here's left click. Okay. 
technically, look, at 0 0.3 seconds, we could send a Q cancel. So that means you could send a fireball light attack every 0 0.3 seconds. Whereas, if you wait all the way for you to be allowed to send action one again, which is another left click, it's 0 0.75 seconds. The time saving for QQ canceling fireball light attacks optimally is 0 0.45 seconds. Enormous. Okay? I don't suppose you're so you should always QQ cancel fireball light Kim attacks, Fels, which we've known. Okay, now let's look at charge attack. What do we see? I've held right click. I've started right click. Okay? I can QQ cancel at any time. That's the, what the first thing is telling me. The next thing is I have a minimum amount of time. There it is, 0 0.08 seconds. If I click, it'll send a minimum fireball. So right click, left click will send a fireball. The lowest possible fireball is 0 0.03 seconds. Okay? If I want to send another fireball, all I have to do, right click, is hold right click right now. And at 0 0.5 seconds, it'll get right back to it. And I can go ahead and left click. It'll queue up my attack. Bam, at 0 0.13 seconds, it'll send again. So for fireball, absolute optimal inputs, well, close to optimal inputs, is just holding right click and then left clicking constantly. Technically, if you see that the wield action can be initiated at 0 0.4 seconds, whereas an action to hold, in other words, starting a fireball again, can start at 0 0.5 seconds, there is a one-tenth of a second time save possible with the perfect Q cancel. But that amount of that window is so small, and the extra inputs are so delicate that nobody does it. Okay? Let's move on to conflag, and we'll talk about the last technique we use in Verm, which is the finger roll. So essentially what you do is right click, left click, release right click, press right click again, send it again, okay? That's what it looks like. Let me explain how it works. So let's break it down. I'm holding right click. I've left clicked. Now look, do you see how I can send action two, which is to queue up another right click at 0 0.47 seconds? If I simply held right click, it would not start at 0 0.47. It would wait all the way to 1.8. But if I've released right click and right click again, it will successfully queue up another right click and it will send right click right now at 0 0.47. There it is again. Action one. I'm now this time going to do it the way that we did at the very beginning of Vermintide, which is I'm just going to click and hold right click because that's the thing that makes most sense. Here's 0 0.47 seconds. Oh God. Oh, oh God, here, I got to turn the time up. Oh, oh God, here we go, 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 here we go. 1.18 seconds. Okay, I finally sent another right click. Okay, the time savings is absolutely enormous. It's over half a second to finger roll this. Again, what is finger roll? You release right click after you right click, left click, release both, right click, left click. And for Conflag Staff and Hagbane, it involves considerable time savings. All right, I promised you a few more topics, so let's do them. I've talked about optimal inputs in terms of mechanics. I want to talk about optimal inputs in terms of action queuing and what we are terming smeared inputs. Thank you, Sneaky Panda, for that term, because I think it's a good term. Okay? As many of you probably know, old school players of Quake, a lot of them, a lot of them, used to bind left click to jump because timed jumping was so important in Quake. You had to hit the jump the second you hit the floor again, okay? You cannot cue a jump in old school Quake. You cannot cue a jump in Vermintide, okay? What that means is if I jump and I hit jump right before I hit the floor, it does nothing. I have to wait, jump, hit the floor, and then send jump again, right? The way to absolutely optimize jump input, so you always jumped in time, would be to allow a jump cue action. So if I hit jump any time while I was in the air, the interpretation of the game is the second I can jump again, it wants to send jump. A lot of modern arena shooters have that implementation. A lot of old school like Counter-Strike players and Quake players try to make up that input 
lack, right, that lack of queuing, by binding jump or some other time critical action that does not queue to mouse wheel. What that means is when you're in the air and you're close to hitting the ground, you take your finger and you roll the wheel key. You just roll the wheel key towards you. You send jump five, seven, nine times when you're here, 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 here. And then hopefully you're sending jump in exactly the same frame, physics frame that you hit the ground so that you have absolutely no frames where you're hitting the ground and not jumping again. And that means you'll get perfect jump chaining. Now, perfect jump chaining is not that important in Vermintide. Perfect dodge chaining actually can lead to whether or not your kiting is good. So one thing I'm going to recommend to you is you try binding dodge to wheel down. You bind dodge to wheel down, and if you want to send a duplicate key and keep your original key, the way to do that is to use auto hotkey, or I've um, I, eventually duplicate in, uh, 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 key bindings should be a thing in V2 or dark tide or whatever have you. Okay, so that's going to help you with your optimal inputs, right? Using wheel down to send your dodge. It's less important to do it for jump, but you could also do it for jump if you really wanted to, to optimize jump bunny hopping to like really irritate your teammates or something. Okay, actions that can be queued. Block, light attack, charged attack, swaps. Swaps can be queued. Here's left click, quick switch instantly. Watch what happens. The second the wheeled window opened up at 0.2 seconds, it sent the wheeled action. So if you want to optimize QQ canceling, right? The way you do that is left click Q, left click Q, I've already queued up an action. And the second this window hits, Q left click. Because Q is instant when nothing else is happening. Q, Q left click, Q. Q left click, Q. Q left click, do you get it? So it's not nothing, 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 mash Q, Q, left click as fast as you can. It's Q, nothing, 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 input Q, left click instantly, then a little bit of nothing, then Q, you get the idea, right? So it's not QQ left click. You can bind one of the swaps. You can uh, Q one of the swaps. Likewise with left click attacks. If you just want to spam left click as fast as you can, literally all you have to do is hit left click in a very generous window. Left click, left click, left click. It is extremely easy to always send your attacks in exactly the right timing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all, really, that you send them well-timed. You just have to send enough of them at a, at a minimum frequency over long periods of time. So if you're stacking tons of attack speed, you could consider binding left click to wheel up, using auto hotkey to bind attack to wheel up. And that way, you can just keep rolling up and up and up and save your finger a little bit if you're binding lots and lots of attack speed. OK, so that's some input optimization. Um, Last thing I want to talk about was attack speed. Now, the word attack speed is both extremely useful and, and um, suggestive of what it does, but also at the same time, extremely misleading. So it really is linear. If you have no attack speed and you get 20% attack speed and you were to literally sit there and count the number of attacks you did per second over a minute, and then repeat that experiment for another minute, and you have that 20% attack speed case, you do exactly 20% more attacks, give or take rounding. OK? It really is that. And if you get another 10% on top of that, you get 10% more attacks. So it really is linear with attacks. So attacks per second equals baseline attacks per second times 1 plus percent attack speed, just like you'd expect it to be. However, the way that it actually does that is by reducing action times by the formula default attack time or action time for all actions except for drinking potions and drafts, including throwing bombs, by 1 over 1 plus x, where x is their percent attack speed. So if you have 100% attack speed, every single animation except for drinking drafts and pots in the game is, takes exactly half as much time. Okay, so I'm going to show a janky example of that. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a handmaiden. 
Let's make sure we have Swift Slaying, and we do. Let's make sure we have this guy, which gives us 15% attack speed if we attack a few times, or dodge a few times. And let's go get a potion of um, uh, speed. So this is, speed is 50%, our talent, that's 15, 65, Swift Slaying, that's 20, that's 85. Let's get, um, let's get three, five more attack speed, okay? Let's get this guy and this guy. Oh God, so slow. Apologies. Hopefully that helps everything. Create weapon. 90. Let's get a charm. 95. Oh, that might be weird. Let's just get a charm that has attack speed. 95. And let's make a necklace that also has attack speed and something else pointless. Create weapon. That should be 100. I missed miss my count. But in any case, it'll still be indicative, okay? Let's turn this back on. Minimum block time is normally 0 0.2 seconds. Do you see the minimum block time is already 0 0.17 seconds? That's just due to the attack speed I have here and here. Let's dodge a few times. That's 15%, and let's get a crit. Okay. And then let's slow down time and hit block. 0 0.13 seconds. We're already getting close to 100% attack speed. Let's go ahead and drink a potion on top of this. Do, do, do. Get another dodge in there. Bam! Speed kicks in. Here's our minimum block time. 0 0.1 seconds, exactly as predicted. 100% attack speed is the equivalent to actions take half as much time. That is all actions. That is how much time there is in the four swing, the amount of time before the animation, as the animation gets to the actual damage, the amount of time you're actually doing a sweep to hit the opponent, and the amount of time after here, right, in the post swing until you can do another action. So what I want to illustrate to you, and hopefully we can do this, is I want to get to light four, which as you might recall, had a huge time saving window with QQ cancel. Here's two, three, four. Okay, what I want you to see is just one thing, just one thing. When you have a lot of attack speed, the optimization you get from a good QQ cancel or block cancel, or from a QQ cancel is reduced, okay? So this gap right here used to be double this size. So a QQ cancel saves you half as much time when you have 100% attack speed. Is that okay? I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Um, block cancels, on the other hand, not as much affected because the minimum block time gets reduced by that same proportionality. So the minimum block time is half, halved as well. So in my opinion, in the age of block of uh, massive amounts of attack speed, 20, 30, 40% not being that uncommon, if block canceling and QQ canceling are comparable, block cancel. If QQ canceling and light attacking are comparable, time savings of less than 10, 15, uh, 10 point, uh, uh, maybe 0 0.1 seconds, 0 0.15 seconds, don't bother. Don't bother. The chance of sending bad inputs and making a mistake are too high to justify, in my opinion. Okay. I hope that explains a lot of things. I want to show you one more thing about attack speed that most people don't know, which is it affects range weapons. It affects range weapons. It affects how long it takes to zoom, how long it takes once you've zoomed to take a shot, and then it also affects how long after you've shot you have to sit there until you can go back to your melee weapon. So if you have a career like Handmaiden, which is very common to have 35% move speed at any given moment during combat due to Swift Slaying plus her passive, she is flat out better at swipping, switching to her longbow, taking a shot and switching back safely than another elf that doesn't have all that attack speed, right? 
And she's flat out worse. Every character is flat out worse at doing that action when they don't have attack speed. So a lot of the optimization that comes with experience with the weapon is being able to feel the exact right amount of time it takes to have absolute optimal inputs when you have attack speed and when you don't have attack speed. That's a lot of the skill that goes with Swift Slang. And that's why weapons can feel so unwieldy when Swift Slang isn't procced yet. Um, anyways, I hope this answers more questions then it uh, opens up. But if you have more, come to the Discord and ask. I'll be happy to do a follow-up. Maybe we can just do something on Twitch and I'll show you whatever you need to know. And likewise, if you want to figure out any of this for yourself, that's quite easy. All you have to do is download the mods that are linked in the description below, and you can get started. Have a great day, everyone.